Welcome to your new favorite podcast, Glow Big with Stephanie. I'm your host, Stephanie, and this podcast is for all women. We want to inspire and empower you. We're going to bring you style, humor, entertainment, good intentions, big ideas, hope, and a little bit of sobriety in each and every episode. You can get all that and more at vibewithstephanie.com. But right now, grab yourself a sparkly water, put it in a pretty glass or a coffee and get comfy and enjoy the show. I am so excited today to chat about mindset and manifesting. You know that I love, love, love all of that juicy manifesting. I've been trying to learn and dive into this for years. So today we have Emily, who is a mindset and wellness coach, and she offers so much value on her platforms that I really wanted to snag her here for our Glow Big family. So welcome, Emily. Hi, Steph. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here and talk to you all about mindset and manifestation. Just so excited. Thank you so much. Your page is vibing so much that it caught my eye. So I'm happy that you're here. And your tagline, is that what it's called? The tagline is passion based, Based, right? Yes. I love, love, love that. So tell us how you got started in this line of passion. Okay. It's funny. Everyone asks me, how did you come up with the name passion based? And I genuinely feel that how we show up in this world and how we find what we love is through passion. And for me, I was always really passionate about self-growth. I wanted from a childhood, I always wanted to find ways to connect either to other people, to myself. I just felt myself very introspective and trying to, I was very philosophical. Like I just wanted to understand the world. I want to under, understand people, understand how I work. And so it was around the age of 18 when my mom introduced me to the law of attraction And that changed everything for me. It was like a huge mindset shift. And funny enough, when I first started listening, because my mom didn't want to force me into it, but she wanted to kind of like, kind of show me like, hey, like little bits and pieces. She would put it in on the car and I would listen to it. And at first it was like a different language which is so funny because when you're not in a good vibrational frequency, which I was not at the time, I was very anxious all the time. I was depressed. I was just in a very codependent stage in my life where I didn't trust myself. I didn't trust how anything was really. And so when I was listening to it, I was like, oh gosh, I can, I can understand bits and pieces, but I don't fully get it. Like I don't understand the language. And so I, I, but I did resonate with it. I did feel like, wow, I like the fact that it talks about feeling good. And it talks about, you know, how you can, whatever energy you put out, you get in return. And I believed that. So I decided I was going to practice it and I was going to listen to it nonstop until I understood it. And I would have tapes in the car. I would listen to it on YouTube. I even went to seminars. I actually saw Abraham Hicks in the flesh. (laughs) And I just love everything that they have to say about law of attraction. That's how I first started was with Abraham Hicks. And it's funny because now you're seeing it trending on TikTok. Everybody is talking about Abraham Hicks. And I'm like, whoa, you know, I was taught from my mom, don't push anyone into it. People won't understand. Only tell the people that you really feel close to and and really will understand you because not everybody's going to understand this work. And now I'm really excited to be connecting with people like you to be able to connect in general with so many people who are into manifesting law of attraction. And so that's really how I started to become a life coach was I realized that I wanted to do this and help people. I knew that there was power in this, these principles and in this mindset. So I got my certification to be a life coach. I also became a health coach. I did both. And in all of the life coaching programs that I went through all had to do with somewhat of law of attraction. There was something about manifestation in there. I could just hear it in the language. And so I was like, this is it. This is my jam. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. And I felt so passionate about it. So that's when I changed my name on Instagram and TikTok, all my platforms to passion-based because I wanted to make 
a, sorry, a helicopter's going through. I wanted to make a more of a community of passion-based people who were really dedicated to their self-growth, to their mindset, to their emotional and mental wellness, because that was a huge part of my journey and how connected I feel now was through all of these principles. So that's why I went on TikTok. I actually started TikTok in February and it has just grown so much in the span of a few months, just because I was being myself and talking about what I really love, which is all about how to change your mind and change your emotions. So you can vibrate at a frequency that allows you to have everything that you want in this life, which is what this life is about, right? Instead of constantly feeling like, everything is against you. Why not feel that the world is working for you? Everything is working for you. So that's how I started my journey. That is amazing and so inspiring. (laughs) And I know we talked earlier, I play a lot of mindset, like Abraham Hicks, all kinds of affirmations while we're driving around. And I just feel like the sooner, the better. This really is a mindset thing that all of life is about how you see it. I don't push it on him, but I know he's soaking it in. So I love that. I love that. It's funny. That's what my mom did too. It was not about pushing. It was just about having it on in the background or having on when you were listening to it, right? Like more so about you absorbing the information. And then he gets influenced or inspired by that. Because if you push anyone to do anything, they're going to have some kind of resistance. Just how the energy works for some reason in this, in this universe. So I love that you're just having on for him and he's already getting all these little like bits and pieces flowing into his mind because it's really going to affect how he sees himself and grows up and it's going to make such a huge impact on his well-being. For sure. We do. I am strong. I am happy. I am kind. I am funny and make him say all those things too, just to keep him kind of in check. I love that. So when manifesting, the hard part about it is being where you can find the perfect mindset to get what it is you're asking for. I believe that one time I did manifest a $5,000 check. That's incredible. Can you tell us the story? I don't exactly (laughs) remember it. I just think needed. I had $0 and I just said, Mm. you know, I need like five grand. I just need like five grand. I can pay my credit cards. I can live a little bit. I just need five grand. And it came, it did come. And I don't remember how, I think it was actually having to report my husband's car as a lemon because it was a Ford 2017 SUV brand new. And it was a lemon. So I think they sent us five grand just to settle with it. Wow. But when it comes to all the time manifesting, I started getting really into it again when I was getting sober, just trying to get my mind right. And I think sometimes when I try to manifest, either I don't think I deserve what I'm asking for, I think it's too much. Or here's one recently, I thought of this this morning. Am I a chicken lady? Because I just got chickens. Or am I living in this huge house on the ocean with these doors that swing open to the ocean? I can't exactly decide what I'm asking for. Mm, What happens if you're stuck between personalities? (laughs) It's so funny because that is technically what people really find difficult, right? Is their current identity with the identity that they are constantly molding into. And that's the thing is we have to give ourselves this grace. And if you're both people, that's the beautiful part. You are the lady with chickens and you're also the lady that has the the beautiful house on the beach with open windows. And that's what people don't realize is you're not just one thing. You are multiple things. And in other dimensions, I'm getting all quantum physics here, but I do believe in other universes where you exist as so many different versions of you. So why not be whatever version you want to be right now? If you want to be both, be both. You can bring in anything you want in this world if you see it for yourself and you feel the energy of it now. As if you open the doors to your house and see the beach 
around you, to really be able to experience it as if it's happening to you right now and feeling excitement for it, knowing and trusting that it is coming to you. And that was a huge disconnect for me too, because I was in such a low, a very low vibration place for many years. Even when I was listening to the law of attraction, I was listening to it, listening to it. And I was like, why isn't anything happening? I'm listening, but I wasn't putting in the work. I wasn't putting in time to meditate, to focus upon what I wanted. I wasn't specific about what I wanted. So when you're specific and you can draw a picture as, as if like showing it to somebody in a book, knowing exactly what that looks like, what your life, your dream, ideal, perfect life that is already is happening to you and will happen to you. If you can't show it to them, then you won't be able to actually have it come to fruition because it's like you're at a restaurant. How can you explain to the waiter your order if you don't know what it is? It's the same thing. And I think that's the problem with not being clear. I couldn't write it down because it's hard to decide who it is that I want to be, who it is that I'm manifesting and I'm constantly growing. And then my other question is, what if you are doing all the things and you have chosen what it is you're asking for, but you have someone around you who is negative. Could that person's negativity impact your ability to manifest? It depends on how much it affects you. So let's say you're married and you have someone who doesn't believe in this or is kind of like has that negative thinking. All you can do is really focus on you and, and focus on how you feel and hope that they will be influenced by that. However, I do believe in how other people can lower your vibration. I always tell my clients, really choose wisely who you spend time with because the top five people that you spend time with are the people you're going to think like, behave like. So that's why it's extremely important to be aware of different energies that you're around. And that's always a hard question because there are people who are married or have their best friend that they've had since they were a kid. And those people, they find out that they're not on the same vibration, same frequency as them. So I always suggest that if you can do your do your best to explain how you feel and what you want to that person, if you can communicate properly, then that person hopefully should be able to understand where you're coming from and to be empathetic to what you want and hopefully form to that. My boyfriend is not a law of attraction person at all, even though he is such a manifester, doesn't even try to do it. He is so unbelievably good at whatever he wants. He'll talk about something and the next day it comes into his experience. And it's because he has no low vibration, no negative thinking, no overthinking. He's like water. Everything just flows to him so easily, but he doesn't talk about the law of attraction. I was in a really toxic relationship before where he was a very negative person. And he, I was listening to the law of attraction and really into it while I was with him. I was with him for five years and his low vibration he had a lot of darkness, more than even just negative thinking. And he really put me down. He would say things to me like, you can't do this. Why even bother? And he would tear me down. And I felt like, I can't just keep doing this. I have to break away from this because it's just going to make me dig deeper and deeper into the ground. And I'm never going to be able to see the life and the results that I want when I'm with him. So when the relationship ended, it was like, oh my gosh, wait, now who am I without this person? That was the hard part was deciding I was always with someone who was so negative and so abusive. How can I attract someone who is the opposite of that, who's kind and loving and supportive. How do I get this identity when I'm this identity? That's how I was struggling. How do I get from being abused and being in a toxic, horrible relationship to something that's healthy and good and happy? To answer your question, to be around someone who is negative will actually if you let it affect you, it would negatively affect your manifestations from coming in. If you let it affect you. My mom's always been a spiritual person. My dad was the absolute opposite. When they got together, they have a beautiful story as well. But when they got together, my dad was actually an alcoholic, like very low vibration state where he would come back from a long day of work and he would have like 
three glasses of wine and he would get angry. He wasn't who he is today, which is such an incredible human who is so kind. And I mean, it's just crazy to see how he's changed so much, but he changed because of my mom. If my mom hadn't put all these seeds into him, who because she knew he had potential, she was like, he is a good person. He has a good heart. So I know it's just because of conditioning of, of how he was raised and who he was around for so long that he got into this negative cycle and got into drinking heavily. And because of that, I am going to do my best to give him this these tools, even if he doesn't get it after a few years, like I'm going to put it in him, like make sure that he gets it. Now he's like, he meditates. He's so into the law of attraction. He went to Tony Robbins seminars a few years back. He's just a very different person, really believes in energy and believes in the good that you put out, you get in return. So, and now he's sober and he got sober by himself didn't even just decided one day he's like, I'm not going to do this anymore. This doesn't make me feel good. It just gives me this like low energy and like negative energy. I'm going to stop it completely. And now he's been, I think almost two years sober and he's an amazing, I can't like, I'm so proud of my dad and how much he's changed. But if it wasn't for my mom, I don't know where my dad would have been today when it comes to watching the news because my dad watches the news sometimes. That's the one thing. He still watches the news. I'm not a news person. Neither is my mom. I think it really does get you into a negative vibration, but he is learning. Like he's, he's slowly getting away from it. So if you can detach yourself from the news, you're just allow yourself to kind of like be somewhere else and don't have it in your experience if it affects you because then that's not going to, to help you in your manifestations. What are some of the most simple bite-sized things that we could do to start manifesting something? And should we start small or should we start like I did and get the house on the beach with the big sliding doors overlooking the Atlantic ocean? (laughs) So I, first of all, I think that's amazing that you, you have that picture because that's like, what you see as like, I truly desire that. And I, and I love the feeling of having that. So I I think everyone's different in how they, some people are like, I want to manifest, you know, that big house, the mansion, whatever it is, everybody's different in what they want. Or some people are like, I want something in the next year. I start, I have this vision. So I have, I have a bunch of vision boards I make. I, that's one thing is I think creating a vision board is really helpful to manifest because if you can visually see it, then you allow it to come into your experience. What is the best way to make a vision board these days? Are we still getting magazines and gluing and cutting out (laughs) just because magazines are like $22? (laughs) I know they're expensive now. I mean, if you have a print and paper, like, yes, but I still get subscription magazines coming to my house. Sometimes I don't know where it comes from. I don't know what it's charging because I don't see it anywhere in my (laughs) subscriptions or in my credit card. So I'm like, I don't know, I guess the universe is bringing them to me. So I get magazines, like home magazines, lifestyle magazines. So I end up taking from that. You can also print them out from like Pinterest, like find some, some beautiful, I mean, there are so many beautiful pictures on Pinterest and ideas. And then you can just go to a Kinko's or some, or even target, you can print out photos and just like have them printed out. And it's not too expensive. Like I'm sure you can spend, like get a few pictures from target and like spend maybe five to $10. But I really think that having a clear picture of what you currently want to experience, like if it's a healthy body, if it's, you know, an amazing partner, you actually have to paint the picture of what that looks like. You know, do you hold hands? How do you feel when you're in a swimsuit? Like having that kind of picture on there, I think is really important because that's what's going to get you to the next thing, which is like the house, right? When you're feeling really confident with who you are and feeling good about, you know, the really important things like your relationship, your career, your relationship with money, your relationship with your health, those things are the most important, right? So those need the most tending to right now. So that's how I create my vision board of what I want to attract now. And like, I would say even in the next year, I have even a five-year one. And then I have my long-term goals, which is 
you know, the house that I want on the beach. I also have a vision of having a house on the beach. I have multiple and I think it's important to have multiple to show that it's not just a linear thing. It will happen in time, but you have to allow all these other things to happen as well. And to trust that that big thing that you want, also the other little things are going to happen for you. If you don't trust and you don't have a strong belief that it's going to happen, then you're going to feel that blockage or that resistance to it not happening. And then you feel down, you feel low because you feel like, oh my gosh, I'm not going to have the thing that I really, really want. But that's going to completely give you a negative feeling. And then that doesn't make you happy. And then all the other things that you want to come in won't be able to come in until you feel emotionally happy, grateful, appreciative. That's when things start to get really strong for you. And that's another thing that I would recommend when it comes to manifesting is if you're in a state of appreciation and gratitude each day, whether it's if you need to wake up and go directly for a walk in the morning and have you know your music on or meditation music or a podcast, whatever it is that makes you feel really good, go into a state of appreciation. I, I do these things called gratitude walks where I look at each thing that's in my experience and I describe it out loud. I describe what I'm seeing out loud, like I'm looking at a tree swaying in the in the breeze. I'm looking at the sky. It's got puffy white clouds and it's super warm out. Like I start to actually say it out loud. So my brain starts to compute as you're actually having a really great day. You actually are. There's so much happening in your experience right now. You think that nothing's happening. Oh no, so much is happening, right? So when you come from that place of like, oh my gosh, I actually have so much already. I The other things are just a bonus. Having those other things come in are just bonuses. And when you look at it like that, everything flows. It's like the resistance just completely vanishes. It starts to feel like, like, oh, a nice steady incline, basically. So the way to get rid of any resistance, your negative attitude or the way you feel would be a state of appreciation and feeling gratitude for what you already have. Gratitude walks are a big part of that. I love that because one of the ways I was able to get sober was these walks and they were not gratitude walks. They were manic. I have to get out of the house right now. Barefoot doesn't matter. I got to go. So walking seems to be quite the cure all for a lot of things, right? Walking is the cure to everything. They even say 10,000 steps a day is actually equivalent to you going to the gym or like it actually is better if anything, because you're giving yourself that time to be in a relaxed state, which is so good for your parasympathetic nervous system. And when your parasympathetic nervous system, which is the relaxed state is turned on, your digestion is improved your thinking is improved, your emotional state is improved. So you want to be doing something like walking or even meditation, whatever feels good to you where your thoughts aren't just consistently on, especially your negative thinking. If you can stop your negative thinking from happening and be in a state of appreciation and gratitude, then again, you are allowing that channel to open up. Every time that you have negative thinking, the channel closes to your heart. Imagine your heart having a gate and it closes it closes back up. So if you go into a state of appreciation and gratitude, your heart opens. Have your heart open to what you actually have in this experience. That has been an ultimate game changer in my mindset of I just need to be grateful and appreciate. I mean, it's not as easy as it sounds when you're in a low vibration state because when you're in a low vibe, negative thinking cycle, It's hard to be like, well, how can I feel gratitude when I feel like absolute crap? You know, it's definitely a practice. So if you can at least go on your walks and find something to be grateful for, um, or even do with a healing on your mindset, which is like listening to podcasts, listening to, I would recommend Abraham Hicks. That was how I started. And so if you can listen to things that will ultimately change your mindset of how you see yourself and how you see your life things will start to happen. You'll see things slowly but surely, but you have to repeat it. If you don't constantly repeat the pattern of doing the walks or doing the self-growth learning, you're not going to see results. Repetition is the mother of skill. So you got to repeat. 
That's right. Consistency is totally key here. So maybe give yourself 21 days to stick to the habit before Mm -hmm. you can expect to see or feel better. I would say 21 days. I think 21 days until 35, I would say, I think 21 is a good start. And you'll start to see even little things start to come into your experience. You'll start to see even your emotions improve. That's the the biggest thing is that's what we all want, right? When we want these things like the, the house on the beach, what we're really looking for is a feeling. We're looking for that emotion it's going to give us, right? So if you can practice the emotion now and practice it like for the life you have right now, then you're going to vibrationally attract that thing that you want. Because when your emotions are gratitude, joy, love, abundance, then again, the floodgates are open. You're like, yes, give me everything. Like I'm allowing it to come into my experience. And so that's the ultimate goal to feel that emotion. That is so inspiring. I'm excited to put some of these into practice, the vision board. I've done one, but it was just kind of, it wasn't what it should have been. So Mm -hmm. I'm excited to put these into practice. And I hope you guys gained a lot of information here. And if you want to find Emily, where can everybody find you for more information? Because you are, you're a coach too. You do one-on-ones. Yes, I do one-on-ones and I also have a group coaching program that I just designed called the Connected Collective. And that is a, you also get a course as well as group coaching and you get a one-on-one coaching as well, where it alternates each week. And what's great is you get a community, right? You get a community of other women who are also on the same path and healing journey as you. We go through health, we go through money, and we go through relationships and how your current beliefs and identity and behaviors are, you know, stopping you from achieving the ultimate health, wealth, and relationships. So we transform by by seeing, seeing what you can do through your mindset and through your beliefs to transform that into putting it into inspired action each day. So that's what, and the course is a lot, has a lot of value. I mean, this is like years and years of me going to seminars and my coaching programs. I put everything into this. And so there's a lot of value and you also get community. It's four months. So that's my group coaching. My one-on-one is personalized. So I personalize each session based off of your needs, who you are as a person. And we go from there. So a lot of my one-on-one clients have gotten so much benefit from our work together. And some of them are like, like I have one, I have actually a lot of clients, but one client specifically this week who has just been breaking complete barriers. She was someone who was not confident for so long and felt like her, her past, her childhood was stopping her from being able to manifest what she wanted. She felt very in a a state of scarcity in a state of like survival. And now she's in a state of abundance and of, of feeling so good for her life and feeling gratitude. And now she just got her first viral TikTok video after starting one week ago. And so she's like, oh my gosh, things are happening. And I'm like, do you see how you have the control by, by healing your mindset, by, by healing the way you see yourself, you can continue to attract what you want. I love it. That's amazing. That's so great. So where can we find you? Where can we find your course and all the things? So you can find me at Passion Based on TikTok, Instagram, Pinterest. I'm going to be on YouTube soon as well. And my my website is passionbasedwellness.com. That's where you can inquire to coach with me. There's also my blog on there. So there's a lot of information on my website and you can check that out. Thank you so much. Thank you for all the value that you provided us today. And we are wishing you the very best. Thank you so much, Steph. Thank you for having me. Thank you everyone for listening. Have a great day.
Thanks for joining Glow Big today. I hope you're leaving feeling empowered and ready to take on the world. Listen, if you're feeling burnt out and a little bit depleted, you should check out my Sober Up to Glow Up course. This is a 30-day value-packed, self-paced video course where you can log in and get yourself some self-care every day. There's yoga, there's breathing techniques, there is mocktail recipes and journals and affirmations, and of course, lessons on sobriety and what it's doing to your body and what to do uh, to combat triggers and cravings. And it is just a lot of fun. It's going to benefit anybody, whether you're a big drinker or not. So go to vibewithstephanie.com slash sober up to glow up course and grab it now while it's in its beta pricing because the price is going to go up almost double really, really soon.